Hey guys, before I dive too deeply into the subject matter, I just wanted to tell you guys up front that this video contains opinions that deviate from the norm, as well as facts that many people don't like to admit. I'm not going to sugarcoat my words. With that said, if you're the type of person who can't respect another fan's viewpoint, this video isn't for you. Likewise, if you are, let's have a discussion in the comment section like mature individuals. Without further ado, let's get started. The Tekken series stands as one of the best fighting game series of all time. Over the course of 25 years, Tekken has cemented itself as a household name and a brand that carries a hefty weight. Tekken 7 is the latest addition in the series garnering over 4 million sales and an overwhelming amount of support from the fighting game community. The game released to universal praise. Everything from the cinematic story mode, to the customization, and to the roster was beloved by many. I'm guilty of liking the game myself, really. Tekken 7 has charm, and I definitely see the appeal. It's a great fighting game. However, I dare say that it's not the best Tekken game. I didn't make this video to bash Tekken 7. I've been with the series ever since Tekken 3, and I've played every main titled entry and tag game in the franchise. I even have a video on this channel breaking down why I think Tekken 4 had the most realistic story. Despite my love for Tekken, I have every right to critique the game, not only as a longtime Tekken fan, but as a consumer. Over the course of the last four years, I've noticed that the community places this game on a high pedestal. Believe me, I'm happy that Tekken is so widely appreciated, but it seems as if people have forgotten just how great the previous titles were. What made Tekken special? Briefly, I'll discuss the features that I value about the game. Hey, I hope you don't mind me cutting in here. If you liked the video so far, make sure to subscribe for more content like this. Starting with the obvious, Tekken 7 is an absolutely gorgeous game. The graphics stands as a testament that the team have not lost their touch when it comes to the graphical presentation. So much time and effort was put into making this game look the best it can be. Secondly, the size of the roster and stages are just fantastic. Launching with 36 characters, 19 stages, and stage transitions for added variety, Tekken 7 really didn't hold its punches. From day one, Tekken 7 felt like an overall balanced game. When a fighting game gets that one distinct thing right, it's a breath of fresh air. Not only will you not have to worry about people gravitating to an overpowered character, but you'll also see more characters being played in general. This is especially true in the esports scene. Additionally, the gameplay is adaptive. It's been years since I felt so inclined to learn so many characters. Personally, I wasn't the biggest fan of Tekken 6's gameplay. With the addition of bounds and the heavier emphasis on juggles, I often felt left in the dust. When a fighting game can deliver an online tournament mode with a traditional bracket system, I can get behind that. Tournament mode makes an online fighting game experience so much better, which gives streamers and online tournament organizers a much needed accommodation. The game's customization in regards to UI is an innovation that I hope inspires other franchises. I adore the large pool of designs given to the player to spice up their interface. If I so choose, I could change the color scheme of my health bar to my favorite shade of red, or an outrageous design that you would never think to find in a fighting game. The decision to add slow motion was one of the most brilliant things I've ever seen. Not only does it make watching games more enjoyable and adrenaline pumping, but it also gives the same experience to the players behind the controllers themselves. The lineup of DLC is easily some of the most impressive content to ever grace a fighting game. The return of Tekken Bowl was a nice choice too, but more on that later. With the inclusion of brand new characters, returning characters, and characters from other franchises, Tekken 7 continues to blow fans away with their announcements. With all of the good out of the way, allow me to touch on the features that disappointed me. In the eyes of many fighting game fans, story is an insignificant feature that offers nothing but marketing appeal. As a fighting game fan myself, I strongly disagree. I've had the opportunity of speaking to countless of fans who appreciate story content in fighting games, many of whom are subscribed to me. We're not a minority. 
We love these characters just as much as we love the game. So many of us have been with the series for years, so certainly we deserve the same quality of story that we've been receiving. Did we get that in Tekken 7? No, not quite. Prior to the release of Tekken 7, I was totally down with the idea of a cinematic story mode. I assumed that we would be getting that on top of the regular arcade stories, which we did. However, the marketing of the game was cruel to us eager fans of the story. I distinctly remember within the last few trailers of Tekken 7, the cinematic story mode cutscenes were highlighted along with the cutscenes of the effortless character stories without any distinction between the two. Naturally, those made me believe that the cinematic story mode was going to feature all of the characters instead of just a handful. On the day of release, I picked up my pre-order and went straight to the cinematic story mode. Mind you, I hardly pre-order games at all, and I had been waiting years for the next entry in the Tekken series. Years. I was horrified, not by the story itself necessarily, but what would come after. I don't know if this was the case in the Japanese version, but the English version of the story had one of the most boring narrators I had ever heard. I know I'm not the best thing since sliced bread myself, but goodness. To have the events of the story told from the perspective of a journalist was a good idea on paper. It has the potential of world building unlike what we had hardly seen from the series before. After all, there are characters in the story that have public identities. The execution was the issue, as halfway through the story, I wanted him gone. Personally, I would have settled for the story narrator from the previous titles. At least he had a voice that could set the mood. The thing that truly horrified me was the individual character stories. They were stripped of any and all personality and structure. The cool narrator was gone, the arcade ladder was stripped to a single battle, and characters shared endings. Characters have had shared endings in the past, in addition to having comedic stories, but never had these conditions been shared among the entirety of the roster. It's lazy writing, no matter what way you look at it. I waited several years for this. Could you imagine how devastating it was for fans to watch Eddie's story? The plotline was presented as a continuation of a story that ended with a cliffhanger in Tekken 3, 15 years ago from the time of release. Somebody at Namco thought it would be a funny idea to not only bring this back up, but to rub it in fans' faces. I was an avid supporter of Lucky Chloe prior to release, as there were many people who voiced their distaste for the character simply because of her design. But after this, I let them have it. Like the other features of the game, I didn't hold Tekken 7 to any high standards that they didn't already set for themselves in the past. In regards to the story, I simply expected good plot lines some character development, more interactions, and perhaps even the return of interludes. Never had I expected that even those things were too much to expect from the game. Tekken has abandoned its age-old formula of giving new characters relevance by tying their story to an established character. Case in point, Nina Williams and Steve Fox. With the new characters of Tekken 7, I don't know what they were thinking. Lucky Chloe is a troll. Josie's was comedic and left little room for development. Shaheen's was non-canon and uncharacteristically comedic. Gigas is irrelevant. Eliza's was actually pretty good, but left off on a cliffhanger as well. And Master Raven's was almost perfect. They even managed to do the most questionable thing to the story that I had ever seen. Put a one-time manga character in the story's canon and dedicate Katarina's soul story to him. Why? To even fix what they managed to ruin with the story, they'll have to either make a separate story DLC or be more diligent in the next entry, both requiring much better writing and planning than Tekken 7. To top it all off, Harada even began revealing key story content on his Twitter account rather than giving the DLC characters proper stories in the game. How absolutely careless. I would have loved to have seen Anna's story illustrated in a traditional prologue, epilogue, and ending. It was arguably the best one she ever had, and it gives her the best motive to kill Nina. Moving on, Tekken 7 lacks the iconic modes that the series is known for. Team Battle, Time Attack, and Tekken Force mode are all missing from the latest entry. 
It's especially devastating if you consider the fact that besides Tekken Bowl and Treasure Battle, which is essentially survival mode, there's nothing else to indulge in with the single player content. In terms of content, Tekken 6 was the most content rich in the series. We were even treated to what was essentially an online Tekken Force mode with RPG elements that allow clothing items to affect the character's statistics. It was essentially like playing two games on a single disc for added single player and multiplayer fun. Returning to Tekken Bowl, I could not fathom the reason why the team didn't implement online features to it. That was a no brainer. I couldn't have been the only person expecting that. It would give the game better longevity, as well as an additional reason to keep players, well, playing the game. The customization within Tekken 6 was better as well featuring more items and even items that were unique to individual characters. Tekken 6 went as far as to divide the torso into three options, inner, outer, and other, for added variety, likewise with the hair and its six individual options. This may sound nitpicky, but Tekken 7's character animations pales in comparison to Tekken 6's. In Tekken 6, characters commonly had half a dozen different pre-battle animations, and sometimes even more so post-battle animations. I also missed the panning shot of the characters after a round concluded, in addition to the back wincing animation after an opponent was defeated. Music is subjective, sure, but the quality of music within Tekken 7 could have been a lot better. We've always been graced with that iconic Namco sound. You could point to any entry within the Tekken series, and I could easily name you over a dozen tunes that were memorable and eargasm inducing. In Tekken 7, I could name you about 5 at best. With so many electronic tunes that lack melodies and instruments, I can't find myself appreciating the soundtrack as I would like to. Although I had much to say about Tekken 7 and what I find to be faults with the game, I wish nothing but success for the Tekken series. I may not be able to enjoy it like I used to, but there is still much fun to be had with it. When you know how good a product can truly be and don't see the amount of passion and love that once was, it really makes you ask yourself what motivated them in the first place. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed the content, check out my video on the story of Jin Kazama. You'll love it.